All right, so you haven't answered, so it's um, this. Beans on toast. There's a lot of rumours going around the changing rooms at the minute. Scran's more of a word than a boy would say. I'm not a boy. I see all the time. Fancy some scran. I cook my own teas. I'm like, you cook your own what? Tea. Tea, so... Which is boil water? <laughs> <laughs> Katie, how have you found settling in Liverpool on the pitch in training and games and then Liverpool itself? It's been a really easy adjustment, I think. One of the easier ones I've had. Um, the girls have been so nice, welcoming. Uh, everyone's helping me if I need a ride home, if I need a ride to training. Um, I've been trying to figure out how to wash clothes and things like that, because things are different here. Um, but no, on the field, it's been good. Uh, it's much softer ground, so I've been using studs and I've learned that you never ever not wear studs because you will slip, so don't think you're better than studs. Um, <laughs> otherwise, it's been good. I uh, just moved in my own place and love the city. Got to explore a bit, so it's been great. No, that's good. When you said soft ground, I thought you were gonna say soft as in players because, I mean, you've took a full brunt of um, Welcome to the championship, welcome to England. Um, if anyone hasn't seen it, the photos circling around social media of Katie taking one in the face, taking one for the team against Palace. Um, how was that? How was that welcome? All I remember was seeing a ball and I was like, I'm going to win this header. And instead I won her cheek and well, her cheek was stronger. So she definitely won that one. Um, <laughs> she walked away totally fine and I walked away with a black eye and I've gotten some good looks walking down the street here. So that's been a nice welcoming experience. Uh, but no, it was a good welcome to uh, Liverpool and championship. And Charlotte, you're recent in the team and do you want to tell us how you've found it, making the step up from your previous team? Yeah, it's been like amazing since coming in, like everyone's been like so, so nice and, and so helpful and like it has been a massive step up, like just the the pace of the game, like the... Um, the sort of, training intensity. The tr yeah, the intensity, a... just the physical side of like everything has been like so different um, and every, everyone's been so helpful helping me transition like being really patient with me and, and actually helping me through it so yeah that's been been amazing since coming in. Yeah I mean you've, you've, all, you've already had a highlight um, obviously the Continental Cup against Sunderland you saved some penalties did you know where they were going to go or are you kind of keep there you just you guess when, when they step up how, how, how did you feel through um, that? I mean obviously Potsy and Potsy and George helped obviously with by by doing the research on on the penalties. But to be fair, I'm sort of one of these where <laughs> I c I can tell sort of where someone's going to put a penalty. Well, most of the time by <laughs> the colour of the boots. Noted. Okay. <laughs> so I wear um, white boots. So where am yeah. I going? You wear white boots. You're going across keeper. I'm you know, right footed and I wear your, white boots. At the yeah, way. so you're right footed, you wear right boots, so you will go. White boots. <laughs> white boots. <laughs> <laughs> you'll go, you'll go um, like, so you'll go across the keeper, so you'll go. Um, my left or my right? Your left, so my right. Yeah, sometimes. Mm. Not against you. Not anymore. <laughs> I tell you what, we'll, we'll, we'll maybe try that in training. Yeah, should do pens on Friday. Let's see. Yeah. What's the hallmark of a good team? I think togetherness, um, being united as a group with the same goal, same ambitions, um, and working together, both on and off the, off the ball and on and off the pitch. Favourite lesson at school? It's <laughs> easy that, PE. Physical education is probably the best thing I was at. <laughs> What's your go-to TV series? I was watching most recently Manifest on Sky which is obviously about a plane crash, disappears for five years, and I won't tell you the ending, but it's really good. <laughs> after a match, I get some good food. <laughs> I love to treat myself after a game. The best food for me is um, probably Indian or pizza, something like that. But yeah, go and see my family and get some good food. I'll probably think about the game, whether it's good or bad, I'll probably think about it for at least the next 24, 48 hours until we're back in again, training, or even at that, it's like trying to improve on what maybe mistakes I'd made in the game. I am a dweller. Uh, I overthink probably a lot, and yeah, I'll watch like huddle the game back and my own clips personally and see where I could have gone better or um, where I did well, so 
Uh, popcorn, sweet or salted? 100% salted. When I go to the cinema with my partner, she always gets sweet popcorn and it's the worst. <laughs> And so she probably does it on purpose, so I know it. she has the whole box to herself. <laughs> the position I play is the best because um, I think it's quite a vocal position, centre half or left back. Being a defender, you've got a lot of players from your team on front of you. And being able to communicate with them and help them as much as I can is some, one of my strengths, I would say. Yeah, I think that's probably why it's the best for my, my, myself personally. Right, one more. My pre-match routine is, um, I like to chill in the morning. I normally like to get everything ready the night before, just so that I know I don't forget anything. Um, so yeah, get up, get dressed. Probably take the dogs for a walk to loosen off the legs and then head off to football. Right, that's it. Thanks for having me. You know, aside from football, um, I have to talk off the pitch, Katie, about... Uh -oh. <laughs> Your tweets. I mean, I get in from training, a couple hours later, I just see your tweets. You know, I mean, you're making me laugh. Is that you, you know, expressing your personality coming out? Do you feel comfortable now in the environment to where you can be more yourself and express yourself? Because, mate, on Twitter, I, I, I find you hilarious, you know, day in, day out, but those tweets have, have got me. I think starting off, I'm always very shy and just kind of like, OK, I'm just going to be here and get by each day. But as I'm opening up more with everybody on the field, it's been nice off the field. Twitter's always been, I don't know, my favorite uh, social media platform because I'm not like the Instagram girl. Um, I don't know my angles at all. So <laughs> Twitter's much better for me, <laughs> little one liners. Um, and luckily, like here, my sarcasm has stuck and people like actually understand some of my humor, whereas before I would tweet something and my sister's like, that's gonna go over people's heads, like you're just gonna look dumb. But you know, it's taken off, I guess, here and on the train rides home, I just think these dumb things and somehow think it's okay to write out loud. So I'm glad somebody thinks it's funny. Yeah, keep expressing yourself because I'm enjoying it and all the all the girls are as well. It, it makes me giggle. So Charlotte, I know you're not living in Liverpool, but how do you feel being, you know, in and around the group on a on a day to day basis then? you know, away games, do you, do you feel like you've settled in quite well? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm quite quite a shy person when you first meet me, but like having a, a group of girls that when I walk in, like literally like you will come up to me and, and give me a fist bump or, or a handshake and that was definitely something that helped settle like my nerves coming in. Um, and obviously sort of, I am traveling up at the moment, but I'm I'm hoping to sort of for next season come up and, and move up. So that should give me a bit of independence. Cause I really want a cat as well. <laughs> a little kitten. Oh, yeah. I'm a dog. Oh, I've, already, I've got yeah. two dogs. I can't, I can't replace Maybe them. Maybe just the goldfish. Yeah. No hairs yeah. anywhere then. It's probably <laughs> safer, yeah. Katie, you're quite an experienced player. You've played for Bayern Munich. You've been all around America. Have you got any like funny stories or whatever? I guess. The most annoying thing about traveling to two places is having to like rebuy appliances. So I just bought a vacuum and I'm like getting older now, so I get pumped about appliances. So I bought a Same. vacuum and an air fryer and I am thrilled. But it's just annoying because I have to buy a new one every place because one, your outlets are weird and the converter thing doesn't really work. So I've broken a few hair dryers and, you know, tried to like convert things and instead I just have to like throw it away, donate it when I leave, and then buy something new. So I have a vacuum in four different countries now that I've kind of gifted, um, you know, bedding, towels, like stupid stuff. Um, I like to have my things up and organized. So like, as soon as I moved in, unpacked my suitcase, and I was like, oh great, no hangers. Had to walk over to Primark, which is my favorite store now. <laughs> oh, I'm an addict. Um, and there's always something in there I don't need, but I want, and so I need it. Yeah, it's have great. You been, have you been to B&M yet? Oh yeah, I went there yesterday. Yeah, everything's Perused. everything's quite cheap in there. Mm. I mean, yeah, I spent like fifty pound. I'm like, I only went in for bread, but it's easily done, and I can see how you can get carried away. Any stories from your previous club? I can remember once um, I was playing uh, with Derby, and we had like a like a cup game, and I kid you not, like the the pitch was actually like that. So like when I was at the top, I'd literally kick it out of my hands and it'd like literally be like landing on the edge of the box, like nearly going over the other keeper. 
And I can remember like coming out to make a save at one point, like when I was at the bottom and I literally fell over because it was uphill. So I, I'm running out thinking that it's like flat and then like get, oh no, horrible. It's so bad. <laughs>Obviously, you are still living at home. Yeah. I heard a rumour that you don't do your own washing. Is that right? So, let me tell you from my mouth, because there's a lot of rumours going around <laughs> the changing rooms at the minute. Do you do it or do you not? So... <laughs> do you clean your boots? <laughs> well, let me just tell you the story. <laughs> so, I get in from training. I'll get a shower. I'll put on my kit outside the washing machine because my dad's got OCD, so say if I was to put my white Nike socks in with my training kit, he'd be like, no, like that's wrong. So basically, yeah, my dad does my kit washing, my mum does my clothes washing. Then my boots. Who tucks you in? <laughs> <laughs> then my boots. I just bring them in my boot bag and then the next morning they're on the radiator spotless. <laughs> Meg left the boots in my car one day and hers were done like, it's. I don't ask him to clean my boots, like... Do you tip him well? Yeah. Yeah, that was like... <laughs> yeah, was he'll like, say, on the, yeah. On the way home, the like, say if I'm out, he'll text me, like, bring chocolate in. I'll get him a few bars of chocolate and that's, like, him happy. All right, like, well, yeah, OK. okay that's my that's... way of paying key. Well, Charlotte, what about you? Do you go home and cook your meals? You know, at, you, you're laughing there, so, I mean, <laughs> come on, so... share, share with the audience. I don't know how to cook a thing. Wow, that's <laughs> bad, cos I cook my own teas. I'm yeah. like, you're a year older than me. You cook your own what? Tea. Tea, so... Which is boil water? <laughs> 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 not like not like a cup of tea. Do you know all right? Dinner. So the tea hey, is the dinner, but like it's tea in Liverpool. So do you Why? know breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Like yes. we say breakfast, dinner, tea. <laughs> well, I'd say breakfast, lunch, tea. Yeah. Yeah. Was, There's just a few different. So you drink your dinner? No, <laughs> no. It's your tea your is dinner. like your di food. So we not that's... a cup of tea. <laughs> not a cup of tea. Just your tea is say, your weird. tea. So like I can cook my own dinner. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Why did you call posh then? Because the, the language. Have you, have you seen I a tweet? Cook me on, have you seen yeah. a tweet? Have you seen a tweet? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. To be fair, I set off the fire alarm. It's only been ten days, but like, I don't have the proper utensils yet because I've told myself to stop swiping my card. No, can you please swipe and get a pan though? You can't use a wok to cook pasta. <laughs> the wok has some depth to it, so you just put some water in the pasta and then you dump it out and then you can reuse it again. It's already hot cook all the sauce and everything in it, it's fantastic. But I am in the market to get a saucepan. But you don't know how to cook? No, I, I can don't. Can you make beans on toast? Yes, I can make beans That's on toast. That's not cooking though. It is? Like, I'm sorry, what is beans? Why is that a thing? <laughs> it's really Beans nice. are the cheapest thing at the store and I think it's so gross. No, <gasps> it's, it's, beans it's, on it's, it's, it's beans on toast with a bit of cheese as well. Do you know, for like pre-match, that's actually like a lot of people's go-tos. Uh, that's what I have every time. Bean. Is that why I went farts on the field? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say beans, I would be horribly guessing. Do you know in the tunnel last week when we were like, <laughs> someone's a bit nervous for this game? What's like a Liverpool thing? Um, Food-wise. Scouse. Scouse, Scouse. thing. So, so it's, that's like a apple. stew and you'd put beetroot in, you'd have crispy white bread and butter. I feel like we need like a, a separate episode of let's try food. Yeah. I'll From bring Liverpool. you in oat cakes and you'll love or them. Or some of the dry mouse cakes. Is that like rice cakes? <laughs> Those are real thin things. Oh, I love so them. So they look I like pancakes, thing. but they're not pa they're not I pancakes because they're sa they're savoury. And the Scottish, aren't they? No, Stafford Staffordshire Stoke. They're from there? Yeah, you only get them there. You might be thinking of the wrong thing, but, but it's you... okay. I think I know what you. But you have one your brekkie with salmon and eggs. Yeah, they're they're unreal. Yeah. If they're similar. We'll we'll have a little research and we'll maybe we'll maybe come back to that. <laughs> well, because no. Katie, I'm not from Liverpool, but Scouse is good. Right, something a bit different next. So the club have got international academies around the world in 22 countries, and they coach 7,500 kids every month. A lot of those kids are girls aged between 8 and 16 and we've asked them to send us some questions about being a footballer and looking for some advice. So shall we take a look at what we've sent in? Yep. I'll right. press the first one then. 
My name is Caitlin Young and I play for LFC International Academy of Maryland. My question is, what do you do to mentally and physically prepare yourself when you've been in bad form and underperforming? When I'm underperforming physically, I like to just try and relax a bit more, whether it means not, not doing a gym session after, after a training session, like, or just sort of like going out that, that night to like a, a swimming pool or something just to like literally relax. On the mental side, like when I'm underperforming, I always like to go back to games where I've done really, really well, like rewatch those games, boost my confidence up a bit and use like positive imagery and sort of talk to myself about, you know, like not going to make any mistakes today. You, you know, you imagine yourself making a, a big save or you imagine yourself like pinging a, a really good ball. But I'd say the biggest thing I do is look back to previous games where I've had a really, really good game and then it helps me get back into the mindset again. Yeah, no, that's a good one. That was a good question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Emily. I'm 16 years old and I wanted to know how do you recover from an injury to reach the same level you were at before you got injured? Any injury, um, depending on what it is, is, is tough mentally um, as well as physically you know I broke my leg in April um, and you know it was very tough mentally coming in I was in all throughout the summer by myself rehabbing but I just think the love of, of the game and knowing I've still got so much to give that pushes me to to strive to to get back up to the level that I was at I've obviously got an exciting year ahead um, with club and country so I think that just makes you push harder than you ever would and yeah it's injuries are always tough but you've just got to have the the right people around you to support you and um, look after yourself mentally uh, as well as physically I think that's really important. Good answer. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Sophie and I'm 14 years old. I would like to know, how do you manage your stress before and during important matches? How do I handle stress? Um, I think you a tweet. lot of it is... Uh, I don't. <laughs> you tweet. <laughs> oh, yeah, you tweet and you just move on. No, I think a lot of it is um, visualization, breathing, remembering things you've done well um, and just getting back to like what got you to the opportunity you're at right now. Um, I think before big games, if I'm ever nervous or stressed, I think it's more I remind myself like how lucky I am to get the opportunity to play um, and just do something that I know brings me so much joy. Um, so if you remember that type of striving to get joy instead of like managing the stress, you kind of ignore most of the stress and instead focus on more of a positive approach to the game. Right, so to finish off, we're going to be doing a Scouse test. I think a big thing, and whenever new people come here, the first thing they mention is the Scouse accent. So, I'm going to go through a few sayings or phrases, and you've got to try and guess what they mean. Katie's been trying to practice, so let's see where she got up to with that. So, number one, gagging in. What do you think that means? Gagging in. Like um, you're stumbling in from the pub. You're slurring your words yeah. and stumbling in. Gagging in. Um, so gagging in would mean, so say if me and Fanny are having a conversation and then like you're not involved, but you're just coming over and like wanting to yeah. know, so you're gagging in. Oh, oh yeah, okay. So you're not okay. invited to the conversation, basically. And Very you're right. gagging yeah, in. Just put kind of your nose in. Yeah. Gagging in. Gagging. Number two, sitting off. Are you a loser in the corner? Like you're not in the conversation, I can't gag in. Um, sitting off would be like, so, say if you're just with your mates in your house or whatever, you're just sitting off, just chilling, watching a film. I mean, even I'm learning here, girl. <laughs> so that's not called hanging out. Number three, let's go for some scran. Oh, food. Let's go for some food. No, that's tea. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go get some tea at Nando's. Is that just any food? Yeah, scran is like any food. food, yeah. You don't want to say food? <laughs> I, I would say food. Okay. I feel like scran's more of a word that a boy would say. I'm not a boy. I see all the time. <laughs> you Find would some scran. Would you? <gasps> In Liverpool, I just reckon, don't know. Okay. Like, it's not many, like, I wouldn't say scran. 
So if you texted me to go get food, or I'd like say, go do you want to go for something to eat? Yeah, I think it's a northern thing it's as well. A, yeah. So like, if I was speaking in Lawsy, I'm like, oh, how will I let's go get some scram. But I wouldn't mm. text her and go, she'll get some scram. Yeah, It'd be like, do you want to get some it, food? It, it depends. If you're texting, you wouldn't say it. But like, I feel like my boy mates would text me, I'm going for a scram, like not being... Yeah. Yeah. No, no. A girl yeah. would more say to Call me a boy. No, but, you. But in person, though, <laughs> like if, I, if you and Lozzy are talking or other people, they would say scram. Yeah. You know what I mean? Aye. It just depends on the context and like the situation. Number four, traps. Can you use it in a sentence? Let me see if we can pick What's it up. What's its origin? Just got a new pair of traps. Ah, shoes. Did you not traps? Tra I've heard like treads. Traps like trainers, Traps. but I'm not gonna lie, who made these? Because <laughs> I wouldn't say it. I didn't know traps. I'm le I'm learning traps. I reckon more popular in Liverpool would be webs. Webs like yeah, for <laughs> trainees. I was gonna say you're calling someone <laughs> web feet. That's an, an insult. Okay, <laughs> yeah. last but not least, swerve that. Oh, like. You know. <laughs> <laughs> like say, if, like, cut that. say, say yeah. if like you were in a club and like you was gonna go up to someone, but then someone's like, oh nah, I swear to that like you don't like you don't want to go there. Are you told that often? <laughs> Charlie, yeah. swear to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's no, a other good. Other people are told yeah, that that's often. Good. That's a good way of putting it. Like you could use it in that situation, or like say if someone said, do you wanna come and do extras? On the pitch, nah, I swear that. that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a way of just like when's that one? When, you, when, when, <laughs> when you're pushing it off, just Jen brush it. Katie on Friday. Swerve that feeling. Swerve that feeling. Swerve that. <laughs> when when you what want to do a uh, penos, nah, swerve that. Yeah, that's perfect that's way of putting it. Well, on that note, let's swerve it in it. <laughs> swerve this show, and we'll hope to see you again soon and have you back on. Thank yeah, you girls, very much for having us. Yeah, thank you.